Hello and Merry Christmas everyone. My name is Worthy TV. I am a Valorant coach and I've been doing this now for two years. It's crazy how fast time flies. Today's VOD and today's video is really about trying to get you guys to uh, learn how to VOD for yourself and deal with adversity. This video uh, is not my greatest. This whole script is not my greatest and it's important for me to show that not all my games are perfect. What really defines you as a player is learning how to deal with adversity and what to do in the moments where things are not necessarily going your way all the time. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at footage from a 10 man from my discord where every month I give out these Valorant gift cards, $25 up to a hundred dollars. I give away every single month. So there is money on the line in these games in this uh, match. So I want to do my very best for the students that I'm playing with to give them the most ideal chance possible to be able to win. So in this video here, we're going to be looking at uh, some of my inconsistent plays and watch over time as they get better, as well as look at some of the IGLing that I do in game. Let's take a look. I just want, I just want early info. Genji's coming. And you can, yeah, you can learn bot. I'm gonna be smoking that spot if they end up coming in. So pre-round planning, as always, is really, really important. I'm asking for A main aggression here so yeah. we can funnel them towards the B site. I'm smoking. I think B, B. I should have probably moved a little bit faster here. Lane. Noticing what's going on at mid. Mid's open. Mid's open. They cross them. Switch, switch, switch. Switch, switch, switch. So already, I'm already getting kind of... I can already feel the way that I'm taking these shots. I'm just... I'm rushing things way too much. You're going to notice that I think by round three, I tell myself I need to slow down. I'm blinding him, blinding him, blinding him. Watch the trip. Be main, be main. Omen, be main. Omen, be main. I'm firing. So you'll notice whenever I do this, I've talked about this in VOD reviews as well is that whenever I'm in a smoke and I'm spamming, I'm always looking at whoop, the mini map and I'm lining up the shots through there to try to hit the shots that I need to hit. Um, always aiming towards head level. He's out, he's out, he's out. Two lanes. Whoa, just rushing, whoa. just rushing. Logs? Logs? These, these mistakes here are just like, I think little pre-game jitters that I haven't really shook. So if you watch this, we go really slow. In each of these gunfights, just, just rough mechanics. I'm seeing him and I'm flicking, but I'm shooting before I'm even, even on him right now. So I'm just like trying to rush uh, the trade kill off my teammate here, which is silly for me altogether. I just need to take my time. I'm <laughs> physically moving in real <laughs> life because I overshot my movement on that one too. Logs, logs, logs. logs. And again, logs, logs. just, just, just whiffing, just totally whiffing on my movement. You can see right here, my shooting air is all over the place. So this is like an emotional response for how I'm playing. And I need to just slow things down and get things back in order. So I'm calling for an A push for short range fights. And the reason for it is that they went towards B last round. It was successful. They might shift setting up for a near site to allow for close range fights for my teammates here. Sander set up a KJ towards middle with the turret towards B for early info. Fight them, fight them, fight them. One, one, in, one in tiles, one in tiles, one in tiles. Watch B, 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 KJ. KJ. Oh shit, he's wrapping towards A. So I assume with the aggression towards A that this team might back off and then seeing that there was one towards B, started to concern me that KJ was in the position that she was in, so she needed to back off. Because if she was in a spot, say like Switch or Boathouse, it guarantees another kill. And really all we're trying to do, again, in these rounds is bare ass minimum, trying to get any kind of damage that we possibly can onto the enemy so that we have uh, been set up for the next round. This is a mistake. For some reason, I thought I heard she was right here. So I just went for the fight on this one, but then I realized late that was uh, the best spot. Uh, Again, I'm not afraid to make plays like that, especially in a round like this, considering it is eco and that we're down three to four. So it's like, how can I make any kind of play possible to make this work? Unfortunately, picked the wrong time to peek. I'm still not feeling great <laughs> in the game. I'm definitely still rushing my shots. A lot of these fights should have been a lot cleaner, but it, you'll notice that I will start making adjustments and realizing middle of the game that I need to do something different with how I'm playing. It's just to make them have pause if they go towards A so that they think we're going wine. 
And it's okay to have these kinds of games. It's just a matter of how you deal with them in the moment. So I just want to explain the purpose behind this smoke that we threw at the beginning of the round. So this smoke that I'm throwing right here, it can function similar to how we have the one way. But the difference here is that the smoke aggressively makes this a major threat. So technically, we could actually have two people here. With how the sky is playing, I'm hoping to, that she would be playing from wine at the beginning of the round. And the reason is, is I want to make this a threat so that if they do come here, once they see that smoke, they're conditioned to think that wine is a threat. And what we can do later on is even play fakes off of it, where we have the sky peek out after the smoke is gone, get killed, and then I can be like tucked in that wine area and they'll have no idea there'll be a second person in there. So you can play a lot of mind games with that kind of positioning. Going for it. Okay, so why did I do this? It seems silly, right? But again, our teammate died, and I'm looking at where my teammates are and what the situation is. They're going to be in a spot to win. I have to do something drastic here to be able to give us any chance. So I play aggressive through the smoke, throwing this flash, this near sight, to try to limit how many people can actually fight me. And I know that the raise alt is out there. So it's like, if I swing this here, and really my issue was crosshair placement coming out of this wall. That was uh, the major problem. For some reason I was aiming up, which definitely was speeding through and not taking my time on this fight. If I slowed this down and aimed this properly, I probably would have gotten one kill and that was ultimately the problem here. So then I have to adjust really quickly and I missed my shots at that point. So I'm rushing the peak out and you'll notice that I make the adjustment um, and make the call for the adjustment later on with myself basically. The peak itself, I don't mind. I throw the flash towards a main to be able to limit the fights that are going to be peaked out on me. And the idea here is to try to get one, maybe two if I can, before dying. And that way I can make it a 3v3 situation, ideally. Uh, I just need to slow down. That should have been two kills. And here is the adjustment, being completely honest with myself. This should have been two kills. And basically my uh, self-assessment was just, I need to slow things down a little bit. I don't have to rush into those peaks, take my time, hit my shots, and everything will go just fine. So over the course of this game, you're gonna see that I'm starting to apply those fixes. You're still gonna see some speed on some of these peaks. And I'm gonna be a little bit upset with myself because I'm like, I just need to slow down. Sometimes it takes two or three times to remind myself I just need to slow down, but you'll see that over time, I will make the adjustments. Regardless of the fact that it's one ver one to three right now, we could still win this game. I'm not giving up on it. 15. Rushing, just rushing here. I get two kills out of it, but that was a miracle as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> I should have been completely laid out in that situation. <laughs> All right, so my fix here should have been again. I'm rushing this peak. I have two smokes. What I should have been doing in this situation is tossing a smoke right on top of my foot. So right on this edge would have been great. And I could isolate a fight either to lane or I could isolate a fight on stairs slash CT. Either one, throwing it right on the spot in this area allows me to better isolate fights for myself. I also have that TP so I can always like throw a smoke and TP into it if I wanted to. Running right out of here is just going to push me into a crossfire. So I was rushing this um, in the interest of time for the bomb being planted. I just need to slow down half a second more and I would have done some more damage. Again, thinking about bare ass minimum, this should have been in my mind in this moment. I just need to do some damage here to see if I can lower their economy. Ass right up in here. They allowed me to pass right up in here, pretty easily. I could probably take my control and slam them. So, I'm making an adjustment on how we're playing defense. First of all, it's 1-4, so things are not going well. So we need to change up our pace of play. And right away, what I suggest is that they have given us a lot of mid control early on into the round, so why not we take it? So tossing a smoke to this area and allowing us to fight through mid and then isolating that fight might be a better alternative. My teammate Genji likes to be quite aggressive towards mid, so if I can fill, if I can file him out or um, funnel out a fight from top mid for him, that will probably make it easier for him to be able to generate something with less pressure. Let's look at 
Do you mean? I actually missed a call here. Whenever this happens, chat, you need to pay attention. This is this is an important one. Whenever this flash comes out, people don't throw this flash for their own good health. They're throwing this flash to execute. This is not something that you commit early onto the round because the omen flash really is something that could be delayed um, over any other flashes thrown in the game. You also have you know KO flashes, all this other stuff. But like the omen flash is a telltale sign that they're trying to push someone off of B main so that they can move it and funnel into the site. So I should have been calling that to B push here. B main, I'm fighting for it. I'm fighting for it. Okay, so the communication I'm fighting for it is me talking to my KJ here that I want to fight for space. Now, the goal here is to understand that there are sections in each of the bomb sites. This is a more advanced concept to understanding how to defend uh, B site on Ascent, but also other bomb sites as well. So if you look at Ascent, Ascent can be sectioned off into five specific sections. The first one is the main entrance right through here, which as a controller, I can control very easily by tossing a smoke like this. The smoke here allows them to now have to decide how do I deal with the smoke? You know, going into this, I can't just right away fight this spot. So sectioning this area, this is the first fight. Then the second fight, that they're gonna be fighting for is number two, which is right over here. This is how you can section out the bomb site. The third one is going to be on switch, right through here. So this kind of box right here. We have the fourth one on bomb site, and then the fifth one, which is on boathouse. Okay. So each of these as a controller, you can fight and defend for. And just because they say get number three as a position locked down, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have B bomb site. And if you're smart enough with your smokes and your positioning of how you can place your smokes, you can easily uh, fight for each of these sections and even help defend a person who is on bomb site B um, from this fourth fight as well. So by throwing a smoke early, you can do that. Another smoke here can help you defend this section of the bomb site right here. Uh, another uh, bomb uh, smoke for three would be the standard one that you throw on B main all the time. So you can notice how a lot of players will default to smoke right away in defense of B site, but they give away these two sections very, very easily to the attackers. The reason why we want to throw those deep smokes is to slow them down, first of all, but also to tax them on utility. Typically, if you throw a smoke, someone has to throw utility to get through to section number two. If they don't, they run their body through it, and they usually will get killed by someone holding the smoke. So... These are two smokes that are underrated that a lot of players do not uh, consider using, which you should definitely add to your arsenal as a controller. Now, let's say that they have three control already. We don't want to be throwing a late smoke on B main, which is a common mistake that a lot of players make. Instead, we want to shift this over to lane because now we're fighting for this section right here. And if you have a teammate on section four, this allows them to be able to deal with uh, the push on lane a lot easier and the push through stairs much easier. This gives them a little bit more space and time to move back to boathouse to be able to defend section four right through here. So you can see how you can section off each of these bomb sites very, very easily, uh, especially with Ascent is one of the easier maps to be able to work with. And as a control, you need to be mindful of timings and throw your smokes accordingly. So you'll see that I'm going to be throwing the smoke here. And now what I want to do is fight for section three with my teammate. Unfortunately, my, th my teammate's a little bit lower rank, so they don't know exactly what I'm talking about, and I'm saying that. So you'll see me committing here, awesome. but you'll also see him falling off, and he's not communicating that he's been naded. Nope. One more, one more, one more. Where so I'm expecting him to be peeking with me, so I'm a little bit frustrated <laughs> that he wasn't there. <laughs> mid, 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 mid. But it ends up working out. We fight for section three, and this was a perfect time to be able to defend that specific spot. If it was... A little bit later, we would have been trying to fight off of section four instead of three off that rush. I do want to talk about this mistake that Genji makes. So he goes into logs right now, and the other team, which is the solo person, has no idea he's in here. But he is aware of the Sova in lane because of the darts and this eventual camera that's about to be thrown. And there's the camera right there. So he is now revealed. So they know that he's there and the bomb is located right here on the ground. So what Genji needs to do is play off contact of Sova here. So if the Cypher ends up swinging out, he's gonna be looking directly at Sova, which allows for Genji to have a free kill because he has no prior knowledge that Genji is sitting in logs right now. Problem is, is that Genji decides to make this decision here, which is to peek out and shoot shots 
which again, the person has no idea up until this point. So now he knows that both players are there and can easily isolate 1v1s on each of them. Notice my frustration. <laughs> so now it's a 1v1 again, forcing that fight and putting our team into a spot where we could have easily lost this round. Because you had that element of surprise, you could have just waited for contact in that situation and there was no rush to take any kind of fight. So this modification of like mid aggression has worked for us, so I'm throwing that smoke again. They're gonna go B, they're gonna go B. They're full B, I think. I'm, I'm fighting this, I'm fighting it. So I need to pay attention there. Again, rushed it again, and I just know it. I just know it. Anytime you see this in my bots, I'm like, what am I doing? This is already lost. I have to, the adjustment I need to make here is knowing that the alt went off, that we have to give space here. And this for KJ was actually a really good play. This was perfect for them. They play this perfectly. I played this really rough. So the peek out here into this fight, trying to defend section three did not make sense considering the fact that they all said they used a lot of utility. They've invested a ton to be able to get these three. They needed to give a little bit respect. At this point, what I should have done is smoke the lane and smoke stairs so that they can be delayed here. And this could give KJ a little bit of time to be able to work through this KO alt and you can even counter all with the KJ alt to be able to prevent this push altogether. One switch, one switch. Rezzing in, in B main. Could be KJ ult. One lane. Nice. So I'm calling for the KJ ult as a potential end to this fight. Um, it really forces them. The problem that, or the reason why I wanted the KJ ult was because if you look in the situation, once they Rezzing finally get B available to be able to throw, look at where our teammates are. Right, Genji is right here. We know that they're collecting in um, these two sections right now, switch and B main. So if we throw the alt down, it now forces them to come onto site, which he can delay again with these guys and just fight through, um, fight through stairs. And if they decide that they need to fall back, they fall right back into an unsuspecting Genji or jet player that is right here and it's an easy wrap up for the round. So this is actually a win condition early into the round and another use for KJ alt, uh, which is something that I feel a lot of players in the platinum diamond rank, which is what happy is, have a hard time doing is giving themselves permission to use that KJ alt outside of retaking or taking a bomb site. Can we KJ alt? One lane. Whenever I say big round to win, it usually means that the other team's gonna go on eco if they lose this round. We wanna really be okay with investing alts if we need to. That is a direct response or a direct conversation to KJ. Like, if you see an opportunity to use this alt, and you're gonna hear me later on this VOD do that as well. If you see an opportunity to use this alt, use it. Because winning here is more important than holding on to your KJ alt for a later round. If the other team is on eco, it's automatic that you win two rounds on paper. Is he in? Flushing him, flushing him, flushing him, flushing him. He's out. To the right, to the right. I'm right still up. rushing this fight. It looks like the shooting error is good, but I'm peeking up this flash way too fast. I just need to take like half a second okay, to Seven properly seconds. peek this and line up my crosshair. Uh, well, to the left. No need to fight. Ten. Fighting. He closed door, he closed door. So as soon as he shot my teammate. I should have just backed off because at that point he has no time to win. So this was actually risky of me to take this fight because if I did die here, then Happy is in a spot where he can get fragged as well and then this round is over. So this was the start of me realizing that I needed to slow down and took my time to hit the shot, which was a good positive thing because I finally made the adjustment, but it was at the expense of a potential lo loss of a round. That's probably the cleanest shot I've landed so far in this game. And I'm realizing that in this moment. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's right. That's how I shoot in this game. <laughs> so I'm predicting a B take right now, but I'm still going to be def defaulting this smoke here as we've had some success with it before. Okay, so here's the aggressive smoke I'm talking about. I actually throw this kind of uh, weird because there's still a gap on it. So it wasn't the best throw, but this is now me fighting for section number one 
and controlling section number two, making that a threat. It works the same as you would be throwing this one right here because it creates this as being a threat. This creates this being a threat, so they have to slowly clear it out and check it. And I'm able to That's do this too. more freely with my smokes because there is really no aggression yeah, towards mid whatsoever. So throwing my smokes towards A main, B main early on, my smokes are gonna come back, so it's no big deal. It's clean. Take it back, take it back. Again, I'm rushing these fights. I thought I killed him twice here. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> I thought I killed him twice. So Fuck. at some point I'm going to at some point I'm gonna finally slow things down. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's a coming up on an attacker side. This this part is awesome. Okay, so for KJ, again, use your alts to be able to win the round. So we have the bomb down in B main. And I end up calling to my teammate. I need them in bomb sight first of all, because if you look at the timer, 32 seconds, they still have to grab the bomb and then they have to haul ass all the way through cat towards A, which is gonna be tight for time. So if you think about it, what could we do to guarantee that they have to push into bomb site here? We can go into B and we can place our alt right here. If we place the alt down in this area, this covers this entire space. So if they go to get get the bomb, there's a chance they can still get detained by it. Um, at this point too, it's gonna cut off seven to nine seconds, give or take, off the timer, which makes it pretty difficult, or at least very close in terms of the timing of how long it would take for someone to rotate from this position all the way to A to be able to plant it. So you're limiting options by using an alt here. So you're gonna hear me call yeah, for it. Right now, we have 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. Can we alt to win? Can we alt to win? And he decided, yeah, we can. So in his thought process, he's like, oh yeah, I'll just throw an alt right here. It's like, dude, that's the worst spot. You can throw the alt. What are you doing? <laughs> you can see I'm getting constipated in this moment. Dude. Because he is literally the win condition. He cannot die here. <laughs> Fucking alt. <laughs> live, 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 we win. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not peek in the situation. <laughs> 12 seconds Live, left. We win. Go vote house, you win. Vote house, you win. <laughs> <laughs> so later on, I did teach the student how to how to deal with the situation. The troll and a half. That's the only you thing you can do to lose. It's the only thing you can do to lose. <laughs> it's like, this is the killjoy it's a, it's a putting himself in that position. My but again, for everyone who's lower rank, this is another use for your KJ ult. You don't have to sit on your KJ ult the entire game and wait for that one retake. Use it to be able to guarantee a round win. This is a huge round win because again, you look at the money right now, right? Obviously you're gonna buy what you can because this is the last round, but look at the situation. If we win that round, boom. Two people who can't buy whatsoever. They're gonna have to force whatever they can. So you have two full buys, one half buy, and two really crap buys, which pretty much guarantees this round win going into the last one. We have three people stacked, which is like huge. It's something that I talk about all the time. You only need three people to hold a bomb site. Now every bomb site's a little bit different, of course. You know, fracture is a completely different can of worms where four people is probably ideal because you want to have someone like say on B site, someone arcade um, two to three on site sort of thing. And that makes it easier to hold that site. But that's like a rare occurrence. A rare occurrence. Most bomb sites, I'd say if you have three people on there already pre-stacked on that spot, you're not going to lose that bomb site. You shouldn't on paper. So we have great aggression through mid to control the space. We have all of this information towards B main up to this point. This is where they could be playing pretty much only. Um, so at that point, they're all gonna funnel into our stack in the situation. And it's a perfect setup for us to be able to no. beat this 5v4. On the right, on the right. Switch, 40, switch, switch. Main. Good job. Alright, so this is where you're gonna start seeing some IGLing from me. We'll get happy over here, placing your turret in this slot. The three of you are going A lobby, I'm gonna to be top mid. You don't so this is a work. standard this is a standard setup here where we're just basically using this for information for aggression on catwalk and obviously aggression through b main so he just needs to live 
And the three of these guys are going to be grouping up, taking a main space. So they have a spot to either deposit one player into the cubby to be able to hear for rotations. Or if things go really well on that aggression, let's say we get two kills on a main, we just explode on a right away. And then our killjoy will be able to lurk up mid or lurk through cat. And I'm spotting for mid aggression right now. So the main brunt of the force is attacking through a main. I don't need to actually take any fights here. That's why I'm jump peeking these. Just for information. Revealed three towards A. They're going to rotate one over. Okay, so this is where I know that they're going to have a 1-1-3 one, one, set up. Just because three of them were revealed on this uh, dagger. So everyone um, rotates and moves based on what is given to us. So nine seconds in, I know it should be a 1-1-3 one, one, at this point. Probably someone peeking you, Cat, in a second. So I'm waiting for the rotation from Market because I figure they're coming here and there might be a chance that someone will swing here on Cat to see if there's information. If you reveal three over here, there's a good chance there will be aggression either from Cat, Mid, or from B main as we're seeing right here. So you're going to see our Killjoy respond adequately off of this. You don't have to shift. We can still work A main a little bit. Nice, good kill, good kill, good kill. kill. Perfect. They're, they're shifting over towards A. They're shifting over towards A. This so this is a clear aggression towards A. This was two massive kills right now because we know that the other three are generally in this area because of the aggression from B main. So what we're going to end up doing now is we're going to be running a fake using our lurker. I'm going to start setting smokes up in these spots right here. And the reason why is I want them thinking we're committing to be off these two kills. So Killjoy is going to sound like a million people being what I call an antagonist lurker to make them think that there's like a massive rush going on to B, which allows our team to now walk, push, and take into A site. So you'll see how that gets executed right here. Wait, hang on. I'm going to send a smoke over towards B. We're going to hit, we're going to hit B. Or sorry, hit A. We're going to hit A. We're going to hit A. Can you just distract over towards B, Killjoy? Distract over towards B. So stagger smoke. We're gonna walk push into A, okay? Go try to make as much noise as you can. They're leaving, they're leaving. Okay, get ready. Go for it. Yep. They got a trip here. Break it and go. Break it and go. Break it and go. Let's go. I don't need to leave this position. I don't need to be in sight because I know we have sight control. So A main. It's something that's really important. A lot of players would decide to run in with their team. Like, why? Just hold this space right here, and you're good to go. Playing main. Play slow, Killjoy. Play slow, Killjoy. You don't need four in the site. You're the win condition. One flanking you, Killjoy. One heaven. Nice. Nice. Tree, tree, tree. One enemy remains. I think the last one's tree. Okay. Watch what the Killjoy is doing here. She's got four kills, and she's thinking, "Oh, I want my ace." You don't need to do that, okay? 4v1 situation, there's no need to be aggressive at all, okay? 3v1, 3v1, 3 And Sphere is going, ooh, I want to kill too. Everyone <laughs> everyone in my Discord server, it seems like, actually everyone in Valor community is like, where do I get the next kill? Where do I get the next kill? So I'm calling out numbers. I call out my numbers constantly to remind people not to play a certain way. 3v1, just put out my contact. Okay, so I'm communicating to both Sphere here and also Genji who's to my right. And I'm saying, play off my contact, play off my contact. So I'll take the first contact and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire a shot and fall off to the left to allow Genji to now swing out and take a free kill. He can't go door because we haven't broken it yet, so this is the only spot he could go to build a win. Nice job, Genji. So that's another example of something where I'm setting up a kill. I didn't get an assist off of that, but I'm setting up a kill to Who's guarantee the round win. Was it Cypher? So there's no stats attached to this, but we end up winning on this. So listen to what I'm calling here. This is full sudden B. Uh, Who was playing on B? Was it Cypher? No, it wasn't. What's this full sudden B? Uh, yeah, so with Jet Rays being revealed on B, I realize that their stall is very, very uh, shitty on the side. <laughs> so if they're still playing those two characters here, then it's very easy for us to just explode on the site. So I'm calling for a rush on B here. They only have the nade for stall, and they're going to be on a weak buy, so it's likely their stall is going to be bad. 
And what I mean by stall is they don't have their KO playing here. They don't have their Cypher. And these are two of their main stall agents to be able to, and even, you know, Omen can play there too, but two of our main stall agents to be able to slow down a, a push. So I'm asking for an aggression. I'm going to be throwing this flash or this near sight to be able to back them off so there's no close range fight. And I'll be throwing the standard smoke in this situation. So we're going to make an adjustment on this round. Flashing on sight. Flash, no flash, no flash. So, Cypher has moved positions here, which is making me think we need to cancel. You guys need to go. They're, they're weak. They're weak here. I got main. I got main. So Sweet. we don't Spear, cancel on this bomb. round, it'll be the next round. We end up committing. Spear. Playing an off angle here, just watching the stairs creep up. Falling off. One in CT, two market. Throw. I know, right? <laughs> Are you sure? So the cipher switch positions here, which I should have paid attention to on this next call, but we end up in this round doing two mid round calls or two mid round adjustments to be able to make this round okay, win for um, us. Killjoy, can you set up over here? Everyone else coming over to be main. Listen, 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 Killjoy. Here, everyone else be main. Everyone else be main. Now, for, kill for that same thing. For Killjoy mains, this turret placement, we want it right here, or we want it here based on what kind of smokes they throw. If they throw their one-way smoke, then obviously the turret there is not going to help us. But the turret here at least controls a main for information. We see if they're going to actually push into wine early on into the round, which is a huge one because if we control this whole space right here, we can always execute onto it later on into the round. But we're going to cancel off of it, okay? Understood. They have an aggressive cage. So the reason why I'm calling for this is that, first of all, we're going to be forcing close range fights on B main. And I call that we're going to be canceling off of this. And the reason why is that I've watched them rotate hard off of something right away. So it's almost an instantaneous rotation. Uh, this is based off the last two rounds that we played. So it's going to create gaps in back their off, defense back elsewhere. We go, cat, we go cat. Back off. We go cat. We move up. We move up. I got smoke in 11. I'm CPing across. There's one market. Smoking five. Cypher cam mid. This was too early of an aggression. Now the problem here is that we're going to be going A, right? And now this is going to be a threat for us. So you're going to see another minor adjustment that I'm going to call for in a second here. One market. Uh, pizza right now. Blood pizza. Yeah. I'm flashing. We're going to go towards tree. Go towards tree. We're going to go towards tree because I don't want to force a, a long range fight on this KO. I don't want to force any kind of funneling because if we run through this area, this section right through here, we don't know what's going on, on the right side. We don't know what's going on, on the left side. So we can get uh, counter fired on multiple angles here, which makes it really, really difficult for us to win. So instead I change our pathing up. So watch what we do. One's right here. Dead. Nice, good kill. So um, we force close range ugly fights on our anti-eco round, which is perfect for us. And we're set up to be able to take uh, a site from behind if we wanted to. So KO is playing on a site, kind of like lost and There's confused. Where's there? Last player is killed from this spot. And we know that KO is the last player on A, so we can easily take B from the situation. Is he on site? So quick mid-round pathing eight. adjustments here are massive on rounds like this to be able to force the close range fights, but also to be in the most ideal position possible to be able to win. I'm showing mid. Open sight. Oh, I'm a real fuck. I'm a blind this was a really good knife because <laughs> I figured I would have caught him He's early on. on. He's going towards market. Just play your life, guys. Nothing blinded me that that I threw this smoke to build across into sight to be able to defend it and play in the boathouse if things go wrong. Full send B again. 
Yeah, full sanity. <clears throat> we can save KJ ult for post plant. Just to win, guarantee it, if we need it. So they're on a lighter buy like right now, so the B take... Round, okay, Happy, I'm not going to be mad at you if you do it. Just the B take should be easier this round because we have faked off of it last round. So we're going to be throwing very similar situation or very similar um, situational utility here to make it seem like it could be the B take again, but they're not 100% sure. So this should slow down their rotations like right away. Because right? so they overcommitted the rotations last time and that cost them. Here, so get ready. I'm getting you guys bumped. Close right. Close right, clear. I'm grabbing an orb. Dated. There's at least two here. I'm ulting. Close! Yes. Last on market. Long sight. Jack, come get healed. There's no need to be there's no need for me to take a fight on, on B main, market. so I just back off here. And let the turret take the fight. I'm baiting for you, Rick. Full blind. Nice. And we have our we have our ult for next round as well, which is great. So you can see that I finally the last few rounds I've finally let my patience come into play with my gunfights. So I've made the adjustments finally. <laughs> and it's gonna happen. When you're not playing consistently like this, like your timing's gonna be off, which is generally what's going on. So you can see that these two fights uh, from both CT and from market, far cleaner. I finally made the adjustment market. on how I wanna be able to take these fights. So clean, and then it could have been cleaner. This one was really, really clean. Like I already knew like mentally I'm taking this fight. Crosshair placement's better as I come right out into it. Very, very, um, Picturesque kind of pick here. Uh, pick here. Full blind. On B. Nice round. I'm just taking that extra half second to prime the peak and guarantee that the fight's gonna happen. I think we can do the same thing, honestly. We can KJ ult to get us in sight this round. So I'm calling for the KJ ult here just because you mean? You mean? He's blind. it's He's blind. likely blind. that KJ they'll ult. either put a stack on the site or they'll rotate fast now that we've done this so many rounds in a row. I'm blinded, I'm like they're gonna fight through this, they're gonna fight, they're gonna fight. I thought for sure he would fight into this area, especially considering it's 12 before, it's like, why not? CP anywhere. Cool. I was trying to get the switch there. But I had bombs, so I'm glad I didn't. So I know I have to Blast. take a fight here one because stairs. we're down numbers. Dead. Another one stairs. So now it's 3v3, 3v1, and we're set to go. He's out, he's out, he's out, he's out. Listening. I'm swinging. Nice shot. And that's that. So ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you got some good value out of that. You sure. got to see some IGLing. Uh, it wasn't my greatest IGL, it wasn't my greatest game, but this is the point. You need to be able to adapt when faced with adversity. So I'm hoping this gives you a little perspective of things that not only you can bother view in your own gameplay, but how you can generate a uh, positive uh, result to a game that isn't quite going your way. Thank you so much for coming out. Appreciate you. Have a great, safe, and happy holidays. Take care.